It's finally happening. PlayStation are answering our prayers. What's happening everybody, Eddie here, and today we've got some breaking news regarding PlayStation's leaked plans to launch their very own Xbox Game Pass style competitor, at least according to sources close to planning the service. This leak comes to us from one Jason Schreier of Bloomberg, which is a very reputable website, and he says that according to people familiar with the service, and based on documents that Bloomberg have reviewed themselves, PlayStation will be launching their own monthly Netflix style PlayStation service codenamed Spartacus, Similar to the very popular Xbox Game Pass and will quote, allow PlayStation owners to pay a monthly fee for access to a catalog of modern and classic games. That sounds pretty dope. Right now information is a little bit on the low side, so bear with me, I'll tell you everything that we know so far. The service is supposedly launching in the spring of 2022 and will be the merging of two PlayStation products that already exist, PlayStation Plus and PlayStation Now, and apparently will be expanded to include much, much more, as well as there not being very much information, Bloomberg does state that these details are not final yet and can change when it comes to the launch of this service, but the leaked documents seem to suggest that the service will still be called PlayStation Plus, but instead will offer three different tiers that offer different benefits to you as a gamer, and then you get to decide what level you wish to subscribe to. Tier 1, the document says, will be the standard PlayStation Plus with the known benefits that we have now, no change there. I assume that means that everyone who's currently on PlayStation Plus will just automatically be migrated over to the tier one of this new PlayStation Plus, and I assume there won't be any change in price. However, we don't know. Tier two will have the benefits of tier one plus, quote, would offer a large catalog of PlayStation 4 and eventually PlayStation 5 games. That's a direct quote there. Notice how it says eventually PlayStation 5. I think that means there's not going to be day one PlayStation 5 exclusives on the service, but we'll get into that in a second. And tier three would include all of the benefits of tier one plus tier two, and would include extended demos, game streaming, I'm guessing for mobile devices and PCs and stuff like that. PlayStation have said they're going to be going harder on cloud gaming, so that's something. And a library of classic PS1, PS2, PS3, and PSP games. Rest in peace, PS Vita. You were taken too soon. <sighs> and that is all the information that we have on this Project Spartacus PlayStation Game Pass service we have right now. No mention of any sort of price for those tiers right now. And crucially, because Xbox does this with their Game Pass, with day one games from their first party studios, no mention of day one first party games from PlayStation at all. If I had to go by logic and understanding of how like business works and how valuable those first party games are, I would venture a guess to say that this service probably won't include those first party day one exclusives. Which on the one hand sucks because it is a key feature of the Xbox Game Pass. It's one of the things that makes it so, so attractive. But also good because games then aren't devalued and the normal price that you pay for games doesn't just disappear once you pay them. They then go to fund the sequel of the project that you really love. Or maybe a brand new IP that you didn't know you was going to be a huge fan of. Something that maybe wasn't possible if you were only taking in five dollars a month. But also, they just make too much money from selling those high quality blockbuster hits day one for the full price. And people want them. People will pay for them because they know they're getting quality. And honestly, no reasonably priced subscription service could ever make up for that. And nor can it cover the development cost of a 100 to 150 million dollar project for each and every exclusive. It's just impossible. If they were going to do it that way, either Sony would have to cut corners and lower the quality of the overall game by making the game smaller smaller, using less talented voice actors, or even loading it with microtransactions. <coughs> Halo Infinite multiplayer, or take a massive loss on each and every game that you put out just to make the service more appealing so you can then lose even more money, which is exactly what Microsoft is doing right now with Xbox's Game Pass. The thing with Xbox, however, is that their ecosystem just wasn't big enough anyway to make those sales after the Xbox One era. So it wasn't that big of a loss of money in comparison to what PlayStation could lose from going from full price games down to a subscription service because their games sell really really, really well in comparison. Anyway, as I said, for right now, the prices of these tiers are a mystery. If I had to guess, going on my gut and the very little information that we know about this service, 
I could see like tier one remaining exactly the same price at $50. Maybe tier two would be like a hundred to $120 a year, which is the one that comes with the extensive catalog of PS4 and eventually PS5 games, whatever that means. And the third tier with those classic PlayStation games on top of all the other perks of tier one and tier two, I could see that around about $160 to $180 a year, which works out to like 15 bucks a month. And then even then, they usually do like a discount for buying yearly. So maybe you can get that down to like $150, something like that. Those prices seem like a good number to me, but that's just all spitballing. Crucially, we have to know exactly what each one of these tiers offer. There may be a really cool feature in some of them that we just don't know yet, and we have to get that information. Like, will it be downloadable games for those classic games, or will it be game streaming? God damn it, please don't let it be game streaming. I will go all Spartan rage if all of those classic games are streaming. I swear to God. <laughs> I assume the PS3 games will still be streaming because that's the way it's been on PlayStation now and I don't assume this service has changed any of that. Although they're a multi-billion dollar company and they couldn't even figure out PS3 emulation on their own goddamn console. But the rest of them, PS1, PS2, PSP, they better all be downloadable. But even if the price is reasonable, not extremely cheap, but reasonable, and it was downloadable, and it has all the extended demos, and they're all cool and everything like that, it crucially doesn't have that one big feature that Xbox's Game Pass has in order to make it a true competitor. The day one exclusives that Xbox offer, while a lot of them are kind of, you know, they don't set the world on fire as of yet, at least the new ones, we don't know what they're going to be like, but they could be amazing titles coming out in the future. If PlayStation were to figure out some sort of way to do it, again, not possible, impossible, never going to happen, don't even believe it for a second, but if they could, that would make it a true competitor. And even then it would kind of leapfrog over Xbox because the quality, the types of games that you're getting from PlayStation are just far and beyond. It wouldn't even be a competition anymore. It would just be, there's Xbox and oh yeah, yeah what are they doing? I'm not sure. <laughs> Anyway, that's all the information on this like breaking news story right now. We might get a little bit more information the weeks that come. As I said, this is supposed to be launching in spring of 2020, which is very, very close. We should be getting information about that anytime now. I was, I wish there was a PSX event at, uh, in December, like we were theorizing all the way up to here because we had rumblings and whatnot. That would have been really, really cool and a great place to show off something like this. It would have been great for the fans, great for everyone. But... Yeah, it doesn't look like we're getting anything like that. Maybe we'll hear something something at the Game Awards. You never know. Anyway, guys, let me know how you feel about this service. What would it take to, to actually get you to be in on a subscription service like this? Do you even like subscription services? Some people don't. I mean, I know that like the first party thing really does like devalue what the, the, the value of your game is, especially when it's first party. But maybe third party ones would just be like a some sort of deal they can work out in the background. And I don't know, something like that. Let me know how you guys feel about this service in the description below in the comment section below rather thank you very much all right i'll see you guys all in the next one bye